Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorials. Today we are going to look at the cash budget, which is a very important area of budgeting in management accounting. But what we are going to do now is just the cash budget. We are going to look at other budgeting areas like the functional budget, the sales budget, production budget, and all those other budgets that form part of the master budget, the budgeted profit and loss account and all that. That will come later in the videos ahead. For now, I want us to focus on the cash budget and then learn how to prepare the cash budget. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Don't forget to share this video and then comment and let us know what you think about it and how this video has helped you. Okay. Now, let us focus on the cash budget. The cash budget has been a headache for most costing and management accounting students. Now, I just want us to focus and see how simple it is to prepare the cash budget. Okay, so now follow me and see how simple this cash budget is. Now the cash budget is like the cash book. What I mean by it's like the cash book is that it only recognizes cash transactions, non-cash transactions and items, and estimates that are not cash involved are not recorded in the cash budget. Now the difference between the cash book and the cash budget is that the cash book is historical. It looks into transactions that has already happened and it records them. But the cash budget is future. It's looking into the future. A forecast of cash inflows and outflows that is expected in a future period. It could be for a month, for a quarter of a year, or for a year, or even half a year. It depends on what you are doing and what you are going to use the information for. But what you have to understand is that a cash budget is like preparing a future cash book. And we are only interested in cash inflows and cash outflows that are expected for the coming period. Okay? And so we are going to prepare the cash budget. I'm going to give you the format of the cash budget. And I'm going to show you what you are not supposed to bring into the cash budget and what you are supposed to bring into the cash budget. And then I'm going to explain to you some of the concepts that makes it a little difficult for people to understand and then i'm going to help you simplify that and so for now let us look at how to prepare the cash budget remember that i have told you that non-cash items cannot be there and so if you see a projected sales if it is cash sales then it will be recorded in a cash budget but if it is a projection of credit sales credit sales are non-cash so it will not be recorded in the cash budget that is where the confusion comes from however if the credit sales happens and then later you are told that the debtors came to pay the money involved then now there is cash involved so we are going to record cash received from debtors but we are not going to record credit sales at the same time when there is cash purchases it's an outflow of cash we are going to record that as an expected outflow but if it is credit purchases we are not going to record that as an expected outflow because it doesn't involve cash we, we know that there is goods involved yes but once there is no cash transaction or there is no cash item in there we don't record and so we are going to look at the cash budget now the cash budget can be presented in two ways you can either start with your opening balances and then look at your cash inflows add that up and take out your cash outflows in a statement form or you can just list your cash inflows take out your cash outflows and then you have a difference of cash for the period and then you can adjust your opening balances at the end whichever way that you want to feel comfortable with you can go by but i'm going to look at the inflows outflows and then i'll do the balances at the end first then afterwards i may talk about the other one also so let us focus on the format of the cash budget and so we'll prepare and see cash budget for the period and then now most of the time these cash budgets are prepared month by month it could be year by but normally it's month by month okay you can prepare it for a quarter or for half a year and for examination purposes most of the time we do that monthly for some number of months okay and so we are going to look at a situation where we are preparing for three months and then we are going to use that to prepare the cash budget and so let us assume that we are preparing this cash budget for 
the period of January to March in 2022. And so you underline that and then you state your months January, February, and then March. Each of these, you make sure that you show your currency sign. If it is dollar, bring your dollar sign below the month. Okay. Now, take note. I have told you that the cash budget recognizes only cash transactions that are expected in the future. And we know that cash has two flows. It's either an inflow or an outflow. So we always ask ourselves this question and we answer that is cash coming in or cash is going out for this transaction. If you cannot recognize if there is a cash inflow or a cash outflow, then it is not a cash transaction. Therefore, it must not appear in your expected cash estimates. Okay, so we are going to talk about our inflows of cash, possible inflows. So cash inflows. Now, when we look at the cash inflows, you can list as many expected inflows as possible, depending on your type of business or the nature of the business. Okay, but I am just going to focus on some common ones that we are going to see. So one of the common cash inflows you are going to see is your cash sales. Remember that I have told you that cash sales will appear as an inflow. So cash flows, you put the figure for January, the figure for February and for March. In, remember that this is a budget and all these figures are just expectations. They are figures that have just been forecasted. Okay, so that is it for cash sales. Now, remember, credit sales will not appear as an inflow because you have not yet received the cash. You only wait to receive the cash before. So if the question has credit sales, do not bring it into the cash budget. But wait for the question to tell you about the receipt of the cash that you have uh, uh, earned from your credit sales. So if the debtors comes to pay from the credit sales, that one involves cash, and then you can bring that. And so we'll bring cash receipts from debtors. Cash receipts from debtors or from your credit customers. You indicate that as an inflow. Cash receipts from your credit customers or from your debtors. That one is a cash inflow. But the credit sales itself is not a cash inflow. I am stressing on that very well because I know what is ahead of us. We are going to solve questions. And then after these two, if there is any other inflow, it's obvious. In fact, these two is mostly the main challenge. Especially this one, I'm going to come back and talk about the cash received from the credit customers. But if there is any inflow that you are expecting as an organization, if you have made any investment in any uh, business or organization and you are expecting dividends, dividend received is an expected inflow, you can put it there. If you are also expecting to pay out dividend to your shareholder, that will become an outflow, an expectation. You also estimate and you put it there. Okay. So that is it. So let us assume that we have dividend. We are expecting to receive dividend. So dividend to be received or dividend received. And then it could be just for one month. Maybe that will come in February. And that means that in January and March, there will be no figure for dividend received. It's not compulsory that for every item, you should have figures for all the months. It's not that. It's not done that way. Okay, so if there is any other income that you are expecting, you just put it there. My focus is for you to understand the format, and then I'll come back and talk about the cash received from the test, how to, how to get that, and then we look at the credit purchases as well. Okay, so let's assume these are our cash inflows. Sorry. So I'll underline them, put the total figure here as total inflows. And remember that I did not do a double underline. I just did just one single underline. A double underline means I am closing off the budget, but I am not done yet, so I just have to close it with one underline. And leave a space, and then come to the next line and talk about my cash outflows. My expected cash outflows. Now let me also talk about the two most common ones that you are going to see. Just like the cash sales and the cash receipts, you are also going to see cash purchases. Cash purchases is a cash outflow. It involves immediate cash, and therefore, you record that as a cash outflow. I told you, you always ask yourself, is the cash coming in 
or cash is going out. Once you make purchases with cash, it is a cash outflow. And therefore, you need to record that you are giving out cash for goods. But when it comes to credit purchases, please don't be tempted. Don't record credit purchases in the cash budget. But eventually, you are going to pay. And so when later you pay that money, which is oh, you owe your suppliers through credit purchases, you are going to pay that. Then you are going to record as an outflow. And that is going to be called cash paid to creditors. Over here was cash receipt. Now we are going to have cash paid to creditors or suppliers. And that is also going to come as an outflow. That is also going to come as an outflow. So remember that it is the credit sales that we don't record. That has given birth to cash receipts. And it is the credit purchases that we don't record. That has given birth to cash paid. And so if you record credit sales, then I don't know what you are going to do with the cash receipts as well. And so please, cash paid to creditors was derived from the credit purchases that we are not recording. So these two and the first two are very important and very key. In fact, they are the heart of everything that we are going to do with the cash budget. So take note. Then from there, if there is any other outflows or payments like wages, rent, rates, salaries, all those expenses that we pay that we know about, we can talk about them. But remember that depreciation is a non-cash item. Depreciation does not involve cash. So don't bring in depreciation as a cash outflow. Almost all the expenses are paid with cash, but be careful that you are not bringing in items like depreciation, provision for that, for debt, and all those ones. Please, they don't involve cash. We are only interested in cash. Is cash coming? Yes. Is cash going? Yes. Cash inflow, cash outflow, that is all with the cash budget. And so let us think of another expense like salary with written wages. So let us look at another expense like rent. Then it could be that you can pay a particular expense for just one month, okay, like an insurance premium, which is due to be paid in, let's say, uh, January. So you pay that in January and then there is no expectation that you are going to pay in any other month. And so this is how you go by the cash outflows as well. These are not the only outflows you are going to see. It will differ from question by question. But the bottom line is that you need to understand how to record these things in your cash budget. And so you just do another single underline and then you put the totals of the cash outflow there as well. And then the balancing. This is where most students have issues with the balancing. Remember that this particular format is a type that I didn't start with the opening balance. Normally, like a cash book, we start with the balance brought forward for cash. And in that case, it would have been just January because February and March is an expectation. Even January transactions are expectations. But as for the opening balance, we can bring it from the previous month as a closing balance for December for last year will become the opening balance for January. So that will be given in the question, mostly. Then, since we did not start with that, let me show you how to close with the opening balances. Now, what you are going to do, what you are going to do is that you are going to subtract the total outflows from the inflows to get the net inflows. So it's going to be inflows minus outflows for each of the months. So you are going to put that here. So inflows minus outflows, we put that below the total outflows. And then we call it net cash flows. Net cash flow. So this is your net cash flows for each of the months. That is the inflows minus the outflows. It's going to give us the net. And that it could be negative anyway. But whether if it's negative, you put it in bracket. If it is positive, you just put it there as it's supposed to be. Then you now bring your opening balance. And this is where we do the balancing of the cash budget. I know a lot of students have challenges with how to balance this cash budget. And I'm going to show you. Now, you start, you write here opening balance. After you have gotten the net, the difference, then you bring the opening balance. You will be given only one opening balance, which is the one you are supposed to begin with January. And so you put that figure here. And this opening balance that you have gotten in January is coming from 
December's closing balance. And so you cannot balance all the three at a go. You need to do it month after month because of the opening and closing balances. And so when you add your opening balance to the net or the difference in the cash flows, then you can do a double closing. You can have the closing balance for January. So we call this closing cash balance. So once we have the, we add the opening balance to the difference, that is the net cash flows, then we have the closing cash balance. So let's assume that the closing cash balance that we are getting for January is AA. Okay. Now, remember that the closing cash balance for January is going to become the opening cash balance for February. And the closing for February will become the opening for March. That is why you are giving only one opening balance. Even if you are giving, the, the, I know we, we will get to a level where you may be giving opening balances for all. And that means if we get there and the cash we are getting is either below or under, then we think about borrowing or investing. That is at the higher level. We are starting with the prelims and then we'll move on to those levels as well. But for now, remember that they will give you the opening cash balance for just the first month. And you add that to the net inflows and you have the closing balance for January. Now, the closing balance for January becomes the opening for February. So, we put the AA here. So, you see that we are going to bring this closing balance here as an opening balance under February. This AA. And then we'll close that as well. Let's assume that we have closing balance as BB for February. We are going to transfer this also as an opening balance for March. So, we put the BB here. And then we are going to get less ACC. And so this is how to do the balancing of the cash budget. The closing balance for one month becomes the opening balance of the next month in that order. And that means that if you are getting anything wrong, it's going to run through. So you have to be careful with the way you do your calculations. So this is the format of the cash budget. I'll go and I'll explain again how to look at the other format where we start with the opening balance and then you know which one is better but for me i usually prefer this format where i do the balancing at the end okay now take note it looks very simple and yes it is but these two can really stress you the cash received from debtors and the cash paid to creditors can be stressful because most of the time they are not straightforward to pick from the question you need to do you need to do some workings on that and most of the time it depends on the way they construct the english because there are conditions that are attached to them so you'll be giving some credit sales sometimes you may even be giving total sales and the question will give you percentage requirement to split your sales into cash sales and credit sales components and then you'll be giving instructions on how the credit sales will be paid for example by your debtor so if you are going to receive the money from your debtors, those that you make credit sales to. They will be giving you instructions or percentage. So, for example, they can tell you that credit, when credit sales are made, 60% is collected in the month of sale, 30% in the next month after sale, and then the last 10% in the next two months or the next month after the 30 percent so it depends on the way they construct the english they can give, even give you percentages up to a point where it's not up to 100 percent meaning that a portion of the credit sales will be bad debt but don't be deceived to record bad debt as an outflow because it does not involve cash i told you that if there is anything that does not involve cash it will not appear in the cash budget so please in the part two of this video where we are solving a question i'm going to stress on these kind of instructions that they give when we look at the cash pay to creditors also yes it's also another headache where they can give you instructions on how to collect or how to pay the money to your creditors and we are going to prepare a schedule for that both of them schedule of cash receipt from debtors and a schedule for cash pay to creditors we can prepare schedules for those two as well and so we are going to do some workings on those two especially and if there is any adjustment to be made we make as well and remember that depreciation bad debt and all those non-cash items will not appear so even if they are given in the question be smart and don't include them in your cash budget other than that this is as simple as abc and this is the cash budget 
that many of us cry over. Okay. Now let us assume that we are going by the format where we start with the opening balances. This is what it would have been. We would have started with the balance brought forward here, but we'll leave it blank. Okay. Let me just adjust this um, format I have given and then try and transform it to become the other format that I have not given. Okay. Now, let us assume we are dealing with the other format where we are not going to do the closing balances at the end, but we'll do the closing balances at the beginning. Now, in that case, we would have said balance brought forward before, or opening balance before the inflows. So, January, February, and then March. Okay, so this is what we would have done. Remember, I have told you that they are going to give you the first opening balance. That is for January. And so you would have still ignored all these ones. Make all the entries. Then after that, you do the balancing. Don't do it because you cannot get the opening balance for February if you are not getting the closing balance for January. And so you add up all this after you've made the entries, gotten your total outflows now in this case you see that you are going to add the opening balance directly to get the total inflows and so what is going to happen is that you now take the total inflows subtract from your outflows and it gives you a closing balance of let's say ee so that will be your closing balance okay then you bring this ee up and then you do the same to get a closing balance of BB. You bring the BB up, and then you get the closing balance of CC. So this is just another alternative presentation. However, my focus, me personally, I love to go by the first presentation. I don't know which one you prefer. If you are familiar with this, go. The entries does not change. The only change is whether you are bringing the closing balance down to do the balancing, or you are taking it up. To do the balancing and whichever method that you use your closing balances should be the same and it's very very important okay all right so this brings us to the part one of our video on cash budget in our next video we are going to solve a question on cash budget and then we are going to learn how to prepare the cash receipt from the test schedule and the cash paid to creditors schedule as well remember to share this video and then invite your friends to also have a benefit Together we grow, together we become successful. Until we meet again another time, it is bye for now.